What is up guys, Spooky Cacus here, and today we have the guide for the brand new Haunted Forest activity just introduced into Destiny 2 with the Festival of the Lost event. This video is going to be showcasing everything you need to know about this new activity, how to access it and what it's all about, some stuff that may not inherently be obvious, and most importantly, a bunch of tips and strategies to let you guys consistently get seven branches or above because the Haunted Forest, if you are getting those high branch values, is going to be the best way to get Fragmented Souls, the brand new currency that's used to buy pretty much everything important within this Festival of the Lost event, including the 600 power masterworked auto rifle available from Amanda Holiday. And so, let's get started. But first, hey, I actually finally got some decent merch. Check it out in the description. All right, that's it. So, the first thing you're going to need to do to access the Haunted Forest, because if you just log on, it won't inherently be accessible. You need to do the quest line to start off all of the Festival of the Lost activities. So you load into the tower, you go and talk to Amanda Holiday. She's gonna send you to IO to go do a couple of Lost Sectors. Once you do, you go back to her and then she's going to make you do like one baseline Haunted Forest and then kind of after that, you are going to actually be able to talk to her again and you get a masterworked like 600, I think it actually depends on your power level, but you get a masterworked fighting lion exotic. Uh, if you're interested, so it will come with a catalyst and you actually increase its catalyst during this activity um, During the festival of the lost which is pretty cool, but that's all aside Once you get that you will also have access to the full haunted forest activity So you actually start this activity off from the tower map and as soon as you do You're gonna have this staging area which we'll come back to with a plate Stand on this plate and then that's gonna start the activity now as soon as this plate is all the way up You're going to have a 15 minute timer and then you're going to have a percentage of the current branch cleared up to 100% Now this is really where the activity begins. You're gonna have to slay out on ads once you kill enough ads, it's going to go all the way to 100%. As soon as it does, no matter where you are, it's going to teleport you to a special location and you're going to begin a boss fight within this location. Once you kill the boss, you're going to go back to another staging area, have to stand on that plate again, and begin branch two, branch three, and it continues like pretty much infinitely. So that is the baseline for this activity. Go through the infinite forest or the haunted forest, kill enemies as quickly as possible to get up to 100%, kill the boss as quickly as possible so that you can get to stage two or branch two, and then three, and then four, and then you keep continuing. Now, some tips for this. Number one, this staging area. This is actually pretty important. When you're in the staging area, so as long as you haven't fully completed that first plate, it's not gonna eat away at your time. So this is where you can go to the bathroom, get a snack, wait for your fire team members to all be ready, reload your weapons, charge your super. You can do a bunch of stuff in this staging area. So don't just immediately jump on that plate, make sure everyone is ready because your time, your 15 minute time is gonna be super important. Like I said, the baseline of the activity is pretty easy. Killing enemies, filling up to 100%, killing bosses, and then doing that all again for the next branch. But you have only 15 minutes to do it. So you need to ascend as many branches as fast as possible before that 15 minute timer wears out. Now something important to note for how the timing works once the time gets to zero, you don't actually stop or get teleported out or anything like that. It just becomes respawning restricted. So you as a team has to stay alive. If you guys all die, then you're screwed. But as long as you're staying alive, it has somewhat of a nightfall style respawn timer. So after 30 seconds, your teammates can get up, but before then they have to be revived. And if you're on wave seven, let's say, and you're at 50% and the time gets to zero, then the respawn restricted is going to pop up, but you still have an opportunity to beat that last branch to get to 100%, then it's going to teleport you to the boss, and once you kill that boss, you will have completed this activity. 
So if you get to wave eight with two seconds left, you're still good to go. It's gonna become respawn restricted, so you have to play cautiously, but you still have the chance to be on wave eight, get to 100%, and again, kill that wave eight boss and claim the chest. Now, speaking of claiming that chest, a little tip for you guys. Um, when you do that, the bottom of this passageway, of this hallway, is going to disappear and you're gonna fall into a pit with the invincible nightmare. Now, if this happens, actually just die. Let him kill you because then you're gonna respawn at the chest. You actually won't be able to just get out. Now, if you're stuck in here and something happens, you actually won't be able to go and open the chest, but don't fret, you will still have your fragmented souls, but the, you'll have to go back to the tower and get them from your postmaster. So just try to avoid falling down this pit in the first place. So the further you go, the higher the branch you get to, the better your reward, and your reward is just going to be those fragmented souls. But if you're getting to wave seven consistently, you're getting nine to 10 within one activity. And that's pretty amazing considering it costs 120 to buy that auto rifle and you only get one for completing a daily bounty. So getting consistently to 10 around every 15 minutes is very, very good. And speaking of fragmented souls, there's actually opportunities during the Haunted Forest run to get more than normal because secret chests actually spawn as you're running through this activity. So sometimes you'll hear another branch of the infinite forest spawn, another, another location spawn. Always be kind of looking around. It's usually quite shaded as you can see in the background gameplay, but there'll be a chest here that rewards two fragmented souls. And again, considering daily bounties award just one, that's pretty darn good. Open five chests and you've basically done a whole Branch 7 run of Haunted Forest. But of course, even though it's definitely worth going and getting these chests and you can hit up a few and still make it to Branch 7 easily, you don't want to spend too much time looking for these chests, that's just a waste. So, how do you start reaching Branch 7 or above consistently? Well, number one, speed. The speed at which you get to 100%, the speed at which you kill enemies. Now, there's several different factors that go into this, but first tip, wear your new Festival of the Lost mask, because masks aren't just for pure decoration this time. They actually have a very practical purpose. When you have a mask on, you're gonna have a chance to, when you first get it, equip a certain perk, and then you level up that perk the more nightmares you kill, the more bosses you kill within the haunted forest. So, you know, you're going to, at first, unlock heavy ammo finder, basically, for it. Already pretty good. Then you're gonna unlock, depending on what you pick, you know, the ability to heal when you get a precision kill. That's very useful and it'll keep going you'll get more damage against the nightmares and stuff like that so that is definitely something to do put on your mask and start leveling it up by farming the haunted forest activity the more levels and perks you get with it the easier it's going to become now as for some more general tips number one you're going to have a nightmare knight the big massive guy with the battle axe pursuing you for a lot of this activity and he's totally invincible. If you see this guy, if you see the nightmare, you just have to avoid him, don't get too close. He can insta-kill you, and when he does, and anytime you die actually, it's really important, remember this tip, do not respawn, because when you do, you're going to be teleported all the way back to the staging area. So you're just gonna have to run up and not have any ads spawning around you until you catch up with your team. That's a huge detriment. It is way better to just wait until you're revived. Obviously, if your whole team dies or something like that, or you're close to the staging area, there's exceptions to this, but seriously, wait for the revive instead of respawning. It's gonna save you a lot of time and get you a lot of progress because you get to stick with your team. Another big tip is that when you're killing enemies, the power of those enemies is going to reflect the amount of percentage points they give you up to 100%. So if you kill a yellow bar, it's gonna give more points uh, than a red bar, obviously. If you kill a daemon, the glowing red guys, they're gonna give you a ton of points. So you really wanna prioritize those guys, you wanna kill them as fast as possible, and it means that if there's a couple of red bars behind you, it's not worth going back. It's way more worth it pushing forward to get those daemon spawns. You wanna see as many of those red guys as possible so you can kill them quickly, 
build your percentage points super high and then go to the next branch. Again, don't waste time hunting down every single red bar. All right, now moving on from there, let's talk about recommendations for classes and subclasses. So most importantly, to help with the speed, you need subclasses with supers that can kill a lot of ads, ad clearing supers. So stuff like um, Hammer Titans, Stormcaller Warlock, you have Tether, you have even new stuff, um, Sentinel Titan, Nova Warp Warlock, etc. Stuff that can kill a lot of enemies when you activate it is very important. And the only exception to not using one of these type of supers is if you are the one guy on your team using Well of Radiance. It can be helpful when you are fighting those bosses and you're gonna have to fight many bosses. You know, it's not just one boss fight we're talking about, we're talking about seven plus to be able to pop a Well of Radiance, especially if you don't have the absolute best loot. If you don't have an Escalation Shotgun or something like that, it can be very useful to use a Well of Radiance and then suddenly your decent full auto Badlander Shotgun is doing a reasonable impression and still doing quite a lot of damage. So again, ad clearing supers with maybe one well of radiance. Now, definitely it's very important to pair your ad clearing super with an exotic that's going to extend its duration or make it more effective against killing said ads. So if you're using a tether hunter, make sure to be using the Orpheus Riggs exotic leg armor. If you're using a Sentinel Titan, the Doomfang pauldrons. If you're using a Dawnblade, make sure you're specced into the attunement that's going to let you extend your duration for killing enemies, stuff like that. Now, unfortunately, some of those combinations, especially the Skull of Dire Ahamkara for Voidwalker Warlocks and the Crown of Tempest for Voidwalkers and stuff like that, those are kind of non-bows because you have to take off your mask to put on those exotic helmets. And I think the mask is more valuable, especially when you get it all the way leveled up. It's super, super good. So definitely that should be a consideration when choosing your class, subclass, loadout, etc. Now, moving on from there, weapon recommendations. Number one, a primary that is masterworked. This is something that I don't see too many people utilizing recently. Yes, you have a good role with Rampage and that's fantastic, but if you're not producing any orbs, you're missing out on a ton of super activations and once you can start stringing supers in the Haunted Forest, it's really, really important and it's going to make you fly through branches. So a masterwork weapon, the fact that you can produce orbs for double kills, which is gonna be happening all the time, is very important and if you have a whole group all using masterwork primaries, just your output in terms of supers is going to be considerably higher. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I'd love to do that, but I don't have enough masterwork cores, look to year one. The recommended level of the Haunted Forest is only 200. You can bring your light level down substantially and still be fine. So using an old masterworked year one weapon, like an origin story, a midnight coup, any of the raid weapons, frankly, that stuff is going to still do the job of producing orbs and it's gonna slay enemies just fine. Moving on from there, for secondaries, I would highly recommend, if you have it, the Escalation Shotgun. You can see in the background gameplay just how effective it is. I run in there with my Titan. I just use Melting Point, which because it's a melee attack, it triggers Trench Barrel for the Escalation Shotgun, and I just melt enemies. It's bar none the best thing you can use, but if you don't have that, again, you're gonna have to rely on that Well of Radiance a little bit more, perhaps use a good sniper, and then you can just put the well off to the back a little bit and then melt the enemy. There's really not too many places in the boss fight arena that the boss can really avoid you and they tend to be looking at you as well. So you can just lay into them with something again like snipers. Moving on from there, as for heavy weapon recommendations, number one, it's gotta be the sleeper simulant. It is frighteningly effective against bosses, but also very effective against the demons. As you dive further into the haunted forest, 
and your branch increases, the enemies are going to get a little bit harder. They have more health and so on. So being able to just snipe the crap out of those daemons with a sleeper shot and still even at like a branch seven, they're almost always a one hit kill if you get a precision shot for the daemons. So you're just going to be able to breeze through them and it is a very effective weapon to use. If you don't have it, the whisper is fantastic. Obviously, if you don't have that, stuff like a rocket launcher with cluster bombs, that's again going to be good against a group of ads or the boss himself. Legend of Acrius also actually would not be terrible. And Tractor Cannon's not a terrible idea if your other two teammates are using the Escalation Shotgun. Now, something else you definitely want to be aware of is that as you ascend in branches, you're actually going to get modifiers. So make sure that every single time you get to a new staging area, you check the bottom left corner of your screen and see if attrition is on, which is a very common one. It makes it so that you don't actually really heal. You have to kill enemies and they drop uh, little healing orbs. You have to go over that and pick it up. Um, blackout is something that also comes up a ton, makes it so that enemies will like insta melee you. Glass comes up quite a bit as well, making you weaker but regen faster. So there's a bunch of those negative modifiers that can come up here and you need to be aware of them. If you're not paying attention and you don't know blackout is on, you're going to be insta killed by a cabal war dog and it's not going to be fun. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.